What's that? A mouse. So I legitimately, <laughs> legitimately, I legitimately uh, love this little carving. Uh, it sits on the corner of my uh, little workshop here, and every time I look at it, <laughs> I just get a smile to my my grinchy face. So anyway, I digress. This was super fun to make, and I hope that you uh, give it a shot. It's made out of a basswood uh, one by one, so simple enough. Of course, a little extra tail was glued on, but I think it's pretty cute. So try them out. All right, so you can see that I've got a very general uh, drawing on this uh, one by one. And you can also see that I have uh, a new addition to the video, a little picture of the uh, project that we're doing today. And so, yeah, to start this, I wanted to just uh, show you what tools I'm using. Of course, per use, using a uh, flex cut. This is a uh, kind of a newer thing for me. I wanted to try out a knife that I think is uh, great for the cost, that's easy to access, and in other words, easy to find online. And this is that. This is available on the internet. It's, I think, just called the Skewed Detail Knife. It is, yeah. And uh, I've got it linked in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. Uh, it's sharp. It's fairly cheap, just about 30 bucks. So to me, that makes it a great choice. And uh, yeah, so this is a one-by-one. It's a uh, four inch long section of basswood and uh, you don't have to use basswood. You could use birch, you could use poplar, you could even use pine um, or harder woods like oak, maple, etc. So not to uh, worry if you don't have the exact same bit of wood. Without further ado, I've got uh, a uh, ruler and a pencil. So let's get into it. Uh, the first marking I want to make on the piece is uh, the bottom of the head. So from the top of the block down, I'm going to mark about an inch and a quarter. And that's going to be the bottom of his head right there. Okay, so first thing I'd like to do though before I get into that is trim the edges. This is a uh, cute little carving. Um, I've, I've not really, uh, done, this is my second ever mouse, and I, uh, of course I did a practice one for this, but, uh, man, it's just, uh, it's, it's really, a, the main reason I started this project was to scare my wife. Um, she really hates mice. And then I started to think about it a little bit more, and I thought, well, maybe I can try and make a mouse that my wife would actually like. So because <laughs> it's not going to stay in the house if uh, if it's scaring her. So that's what we're trying to do today. This kind of cuter version, as you can see in the upper corner here. So to start this one, uh, I'm going to take a little stop cut in the corner here, like so, and just uh, come all the way over to the corner. And... To the side. I could have transcribed that line, but I'm just going by I. All right. So I'm actually going to be uh, carving his head into the corner because he's got kind of a pointy head. So I might as well. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is uh, angle this uh, head back like so. So I'm actually going to take the knife just about, uh, say, a half an inch above our first line that we drew there. And uh, Start to taper it back from that point, from that like half inch point. Like so. Just taking your time, moving a little bit as you go. And I'm just gonna take some off the top here as well. Like so. sound. So you can see I'm just taking 
this area here, tapering it back all the way to the back of this piece of wood. All right, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna take the corners off. In other words, just kind of round the top of this off a bit more, like so. Like in that, great. Okay, so it's at this point, I wanna define the uh, kind of bottom of his hands as well. So this is easy, inch and a quarter down from there. So right about here, let me, let me guess first and see how close I am. So my drawings will help me too. Yep, inch and a quarter, so my drawings are right. Oh, don't push on the wrong side. You see how I did that? <laughs> Good thing I didn't push hard. Ironically, today I cut myself on a butter knife. We have some sharp butter knives, I'll tell you. Cut myself more with that dang butter knife than I do with my carving knives. It's when you let your guard down, folks, that you get bit. Coming across here, the face of it. This could be done very nicely in a piece that's cut diagonally from the corner to corner. So we could have done that. I'm just gonna end up flattening the back anyway. I'm not gonna worry too much about the back. You could make this a three-dimensional project in the round, carve the back as well. It's not the plan for this one. But uh, all right, so now I'm going to uh, take a little bit more from the bottom of his head. Like so. So I want his head to protrude, and so taking about a probably half inch or a little bit more, maybe even five eighths of an inch out from under his cheek, or under his head, and you can start to round this if you want. Get the roundness of his head and his cheeks in there. Just take that angle up, like so. All right, looking good. So at this point, I'm going to uh, indicate one last thing. And that is the uh, uh, kind of remaining part of his body here. So I want to, because uh, we got, of course, his head here, his arms here, and then we got his legs. So I'm going to kind of flatten this lower part where his legs are. Let me take the taper down here and taper it from here. So probably about three quarters of an inch from the arm line down, I'm gonna start to taper it like so. Okay, give him his little chubby legs. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my knife and uh, create a V cut. So that's a cut where I come in, this is where you need a sharp knife. This is where it's a, a blessing to have the flex cut. It's also nice to have a strap nearby. I've got a hand strap that I can just polish up the tool on when I need to. thing to do. Come in at an angle, like so. And if it doesn't like to cut through, you can use a bit of a slicing motion. Notice that I'm slicing. And you just take your time with this. If you have a saw, you can use a saw for this as well, like a scroll saw, coping saw, even a band saw to kind of separate these two, what will be ears. But uh, I'm using the knife because, well, I'm trying to be consistent and use the simple tool that we have. All right, coming back here. So I'm just splitting the left and right side of his head and the uh, ultimately the ears, like so. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little cut, diagonal cut out of the uh, top of his head here, just defining the top of his head, the beginning of his ear and his forehead all at once. So like so. that. See that? I'm going to do the same thing up top here, like so. And this is, of course, as you can see, in the upper left-hand corner, it's a caricaturized little guy, so he doesn't need to be realistic, which is a big relief, actually, because <laughs> I actually have tried to carve realistic mice before, and they almost just creep me out. I'm not sure I even want one. So <laughs> you could, uh, 
make it more realistic if you wanted to, but I'm not sure I'm into it. All right, so I'm also going to take the uh, bottom of the ear and uh, define that as well, so like so. It's okay if his ears are a little chunky. That's what we want, want to look cute. So like so, V-cut coming in like so. And relieving that. Like so. Okay. Good. Gonna round this up a bit. Very good. I'm gonna take and narrow the head, kind of come underneath the uh, ear, like so. All right. Angling that head a little bit more, like so. Beautiful. Okay, so. I want to give him some arms. <laughs> he's gonna have some funny little arms, right? Because he's a uh, he's just a funny little guy to begin with. So to do that, I'm gonna come come about uh, half an inch from this uh, arm line that we created, the second of the two lines that we first cut in. And I'm gonna take my knife and just scoop above that, and just start to remove some material from above that line, turning upwards, like so. Yeah. So I'm scooping up. Okay. Beautiful. Alrighty. Good, good, good. Taking the flat saw marks. It's some saw chatter that you can see here. Just kind of rounding out that face a little bit more. And even coming around the ears, taking them back just a tiny bit more, like so. Can even take some of this backside out, backside of the mouse, turn it around. You got that corner, you can just flatten that a bit. I'm not so worried about the backside, no one's going to be looking at that. Okay, all right, I'm going to look at it from that side view, and uh, I'm going to take the ears down just a little bit more and uh, that means take the top off of them a little. I don't want to narrow them up too much so I'm not going to take a whole lot out of the top of the ears just a bit. Okay. Now per usual as a safety precaution I'm always keeping my left and right hand uh, in contact, or at least most of the time, keeping those hands in contact with each other, especially when the blade is cutting towards the holding or non-dominant hand, right? It's important that there's a tension between the two hands and that they're counter balancing each other and applying counter weight or counter pressure. That's where you get control and that's where you get your kind of safeguard from stabbing yourself. Okay, so I'm just separating those ears out. You can see, is that starting to get a bit of a mouse thing, which is good. We're not too far into this carving yet, so that's a good sign as things start to take shape early on. Okay. All right. Taking a little bit out of the corner here. See, so what you can do is very easily narrow these ears or make them too small too soon. So. I want to avoid taking too much of an angle out of these ears. I want to keep them proportional. So I want to open them, face them outward a little bit without taking too much of it away. So I almost did that here. There's the focus. See how those ears got a little pointed? So we're going to take them around like so and round them out. Make sure we didn't take too much of that out. You can also, if you took too much of the ear out, cut into the head, <laughs> shrink the head and uh, if you're thinking, well, like you can't just change the design that much off the cuff. Well, I can because it's a caricature. So if I want to make the ears a little bigger and the head a tiny bit smaller, no one's going to care. No one is going to care. It's just going to make them look cuter and sillier. So you see what I'm doing there? Getting that ear, getting that ear back, getting a little bit more volume to that ear. So that's okay. See, there's ways of fixing things, especially when you're kind of designing it 
You're the boss. You're the boss of this thing. Finally, you have control over the project. There's no one telling you what to do. So you don't have to do what uh, anyone tells you. You're the captain of your ship in this project, which is nice, right? I think it's nice. Okay. So our little mouse head's coming along. Let's start to play a little bit more with the uh, arms. So talked about how the arms are going to curve upward here, kind of created that upward turn. I'm going to come below the arms, kind of follow that upward turn, and just define the bottom, kind of of his elbow as an arm. They're going to be these kind of thin, cute little arms, because he is a caricature, and he is kind of a little, almost like an animated character. So I'm coming below the arms like so. Kind of creating a V. You can see that. It's a little bit more defined. That's good. All right, now uh, I'm going to give him a little base, a little shirt, actually. And I'm just going to come just below his arms. And uh, actually, since his arms are kind of turned down, let's put that collar, or the base of the shirt, rather, not the collar, uh, right here. So let's say, uh, I don't know, let's check. What is that? About an inch and a quarter from the bottom to the top. So we like that inch and a quarter thing, don't we? All right, so how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna make a stop cut, and then I'm gonna cut to it from the bottom, coming towards it at an angle like so. And I'm gonna go around and create the base of his shirt that way. I like the idea of him having a shirt. <laughs> it, uh, what is it, anthropomorphizes it? Did I say that right? I don't think I did. It humanizes it. <laughs> Shouldn't try to say big words. Save that for smart people. Ah, I'm just a woodcarver. Anthropomorphizes it? I don't know. I can't do it. See? Taking that shirt all the way around. Stop cut. Cutting up to it like so. Same thing down here. Okay. <laughs> uh, I love this sort of stuff. Okay, I'm just coming up behind the elbow on the uh, upper part of the arm. I'm creating a little stop cut like so. Okay, very good. Mouth. Underneath his head. And a little stop cut at his head, like so. Where his cheeks are. He's gonna have big cheeks, so I'm doing a little stop and relief cut at his cheeks, like so. And just taking that head down. So, all right. Very good. So we got his uh, head, ears, little arms, kind of, and uh, bottom of his shirt. I'm gonna round his shirt off a little more. Take away some of the squareness of his shirt. Or uh, just get the angles out of it. Notice I'm not worried about the back just yet. Not too worried about the back. Okay, like so. All right, let's get his uh, silly little legs in, huh? How about it? I'm going to take the bottom of his feet. Narrow them just a little, like so. 
Actually, we might be a little too long on his, on his legs. Might be a little too long. So I might take a little bit off the bottom here. It's actually a pretty dense piece of basswood and doesn't like being carved cross grain. So you could just take a quick break and polish it up if you wanted to. Just take it a little bit away from the top. Or if you had your bandsaw handy, you just cut it. Right. Notice that even though I'm doing some kind of scary looking hacking, the blade is going outward, right? I'm not, if my hand was in the way, <laughs> obviously, right? it's not rocket science, be a problem. Okay, so I'm just shortening up this piece. So now I'm going to come in to the uh, middle part here. I can just draw a center line. Down at the base there. It's going to be his legs, his pudgy little legs. Start with a V cut. And just work my way back. Like so. I'm just gonna work that all the way to the back of the piece. I won't bore you with that. All right, so you can see I've taken my knife and worked my way through to the back side of his legs and just continuing to uh, cut those down, making V cuts, trying to keep it fairly centered, just checking my work. And it's okay that he's a little chubby on the legs. We can narrow him out a little, but I don't actually mind that he's chubby on the legs. Take some of this off the back here. Just kind of rounding it out. Looks like the wood has some interesting spalting, which is just an inclusion of fungus of some kind. Just some kind of a, a growth. Could be a mycelial growth. So, now I'm going to define the uh, arms a little bit better. I'm just going to come in with, uh, let's see, his sweater. Why don't we take his uh, arms and, and his sweater down to here. So I'm going to end the sweater here, like so. So I'm just going to make a cut going around the hand, like so. Come around here. Again, about, uh, probably about a half an inch from the edge of his hand down to his shirt, or to his uh, sweater. Just make a cut in. Like so. Then I'm going to take the knife and cut towards his hand. Or sorry, towards his shirt. Okay. See that? Turn it upside down. And just define the hands. You don't have to go crazy with the hands. He might be uh, holding his hands. Kind of a proper little mouse. Like so. I'm going to come up here with the uh, arms. Like so. Like so. Going in. And cutting it out. Same thing on this side. Go in.
That's a first. Let me go grab that sucker. And he's back. Anyway, just defining the, uh, the arms. bottom. Okay, all right. Now I'm going to take the shirt collar, define that as well. I'm just going to come in with a little V-cut at the base of his neck. Just deepen a little groove along there. That will actually help to establish the collar of a shirt. We can go around this piece. Again, I'm just not worried too much about the backside, leaving that alone for the duration of this carving. You can carve the backside of it. You can just carry the collar through. I'll just do that just because. I'm feeling generous today. <laughs> I know, right? So generous. <laughs> so giving. I give, I give. Nice. So that's the beginning of his collar. You can even carve his shirt down a little to meet up with his collar. Carve the side V cut for his arm. Like so. Same thing here. A little definition here. that. How about that? That's fun. All right. I'm going to take his legs down, narrow those suckers down a bit. Just taking the corners off the edges. Remember in wood carving, a lot of times it pays off to cut corners. These corners down as well. I don't want these legs to be too angular. But I also want them to kind of have a cute little belly coming out. So that's why I'll make a little stop cut here. Coming down. Like so. See that? Okay. <laughs> kind of cute. He's dangerously close to looking like a fox, though. <laughs> we have to be careful. All right. And part of that is the uh, point of the uh, ears and the positioning up high. And the other part of that is the nose. It's kind of pointy. But we'll, uh, we'll kind of have to make do with what we have. Right? Take a little bit out of that forehead. More mouse-like. Right. I'm going to take these ears now and narrow them at the base, right? Because we've got a uh, little bit of a... Where is that red coming from? <laughs> oh yeah, my butter knife cut. All right, so uh, I'll take a little bit out from the corner here. What we're trying to do is almost create these little satellite like ears, right? So that they kind of narrow at the base. They widen up at the top. And that's really going to take away that kind of fox-like look. So coming in here, like so, undercutting a little, giving that nice, cute little ear look. Kinda, again, so narrowing the ears at the base, like so.
we got those uh, nice little ears. I'm going to be careful with these now. We don't want to bust them off. We've done that before in other carvings, right? And we don't want to bust these little ears. and don't want to narrow them so much that they're impossibly fragile either. But I'm just coming around, bringing the face down in relationship to the ears a little. To make them nice and, like I said, almost like a satellite. Okay. All right. All right, so I'll set the feet in. I'm gonna create a little V-cut, just about a quarter of an inch or maybe even an eighth of an inch from the base of the uh, legs, like so. Okay, just like that. And uh, same on the side, I can't help uh, Sorry, if I get the giggles, <laughs> it's such a, he's such a cute little character. His feet are adorable. Come on, look at these little things. <laughs> uh. Oh man! All right, and the same thing back here. Little V cut to the back of the heel. Not quite as dramatic as the front, of course, because uh, front of his foot's going to be a little bit uh, longer than the back. Okay. Same thing over here. Just coming around, creating his little feet. Right? Not too big. Kind of cute little feet. Like so. Look at these little feet. They're so cute. All right, and I'm gonna take a little bit of the boxiness out of his of his legs. I like them kind of chubby, to be honest. I'm not gonna make them too narrow. I kind of think it makes him look like he's got pants on, kind of like hip hop pants, because of how low the crotch is on him. <laughs> he kind of reminds me of those. Uh, what are they, gerbils from the Kia advertisements that they used to have? Remember that? Kia Soul? <laughs> okay, I digress. Cool. I mean, if your granddaughter doesn't love this thing, or you're, if you have a little daughter, I mean, come on. What does she love then? She's a heartless girl if she doesn't love this. <laughs> Just kidding. Some people really don't like mice. What can you do? I did take the shirt around the back. I figured, well, what the hay? Might as well. Might as well. It's my world. <laughs> and it's your world that you get to create. As Bob Ross would always say, and it's so true. You just get to do what you enjoy. Okay. All right. How about that? How about that? Pretty cool. I'm gonna take the uh, chatter marks out of his uh, out of his back. You could even put little uh, indications of the folds of the shirt if you wanted to as well. I like creating a little bit of a indication of where his uh, shirt kind of folds or wrinkles. Because, I don't know, who knows, maybe he doesn't iron his clothes as often as he should. Or 
Maybe he leaves them in the dryer for too long and they get all wrinkly. I don't do that. I've never done that. Not me. Just this mouse. to uh, make his cheeks a little more kind of poofy. So to do that, I'm going to take a little bit away from here and here. Now it seems a little weird, right, to do that, to take a little bit away from here and here to make his cheeks poofier, but we'll see in just a moment why I'm doing that. I want him to be happy, so his cheeks are going to come out. So I'm coming uh, from the bottom of the head to the top, starting at about the halfway mark, and just scooping up, taking a little bit out from the... Uh, front side of the ear and the head, like so. Same thing over here, just dishing it out a little bit. If you can't take it, then you shouldn't dish it. <laughs> I don't know if that's a real saying or not, but it is now, <laughs> okay? so. We're just taking the corners off of those cuts, rounding those cheeks. And uh, usually I like to start with the eyes, but let's do something with the mouth really quick just to enforce the, uh, what I'm talking about with the happy, happy-go-lucky kind of mouse. Create a little V-groove going around the base of his mouth, like so. And turning upward, upward, upward. Happy, 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 right? Making him happy. We want to have a nice, happy disposition. All right, like so. <laughs> it's kind of a creepy little grin he's got so far, but we'll fix that. We'll be able to fix that. Okay, we take this bottom area down. Gosh, with no eyes, it's kind of terrifying, isn't it? Right in the center, I'm going to t take a line and just a little V chunk out of that. Tiny bit. That was almost too big. That works though. Oh, that works. And uh, define that nose. Just take a little bit out of that tip. A little bit of a. Uh, a nose on him, like that. Cute little button nose. Okay. All right. I'm gonna take a little bit out of the uh, corner of his mouth for the smile. Push his cheeks up because that smile is gonna push his cheeks up. Look at that. See how it does that? Show you in slow motion here how I do it. Put the tip in your yeah, sorry, it's a dumb joke. It's a very Jim Carrey joke. I'm gonna cut a line in here. We establish the corner straight in. Okay. Then I'm gonna take the knife and uh, notice how it's uh, cutting in to the mouth, like so. And I'm just turning it. Look at the how. See, I'm tur turning the knife my wrist as I'm pushing through from the bottom just removing that lower area out and that puts his cheek up right in a kind of a smiling position take the hard edges off of that now you don't want to leave those there you hear that's gonna look weird it's gonna make him look spooky same thing up here on the top part of his mouth don't want any hard lines but you're just making him at least you're getting towards that uh, smiley face that makes your wife not terrified of him, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take the uh, little bit out of the 
top of his cheek here as well. Let's get closer so you can see, like so. Same thing over here, a little bit more on the top of his cheek. Very good, okay. Happy with that. Got his nice big ears. Can we see his goofy grin yet? Getting close. Define that a little bit more. <laughs> okay, so maybe your granddaughter will be scared of this thing still. We'll see. Yeah, remains to be seen. Coming in. And just defining the mouth there, like so. Coming in with a little groove underneath. Soften that lower lip, if you will. Just coming around. Okay, how about that? <laughs> hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Okay, so you can take the mouth. You know, we can actually extend it a little bit further out, if we will, which we will. Just take that groove, a little happy groove, and extend it out, like so. And I do the same thing on the other side. Goofy looking little guy. I'm gonna take the lower lip back just a little bit more. A little bit out of here. And the top here as well. And a little bit out the top here, like so. Just kind of narrowing his head a little bit. a little bit out the back just kind of going along and looking at uh, the shape here and just trying to make adjustments as necessary a little nose notch on the other side A little bit more off the back of his head.
just flattening out his back a little. We're getting pretty close here with this one. So thanks again for tuning in. I do appreciate it. It's uh, it's kind of fun to do these. I mean, come on. You can't be mad when you're carving a little uh, cute little mouse. I mean, I guess you could if it's really not going your way, which I, mean, I guess we can all relate to, but... Uh, At least you can enjoy the simple sound of the knife slicing through the wood. Okay, so I'm just kind of flattening his back out a little. And he's got uh, quite a little character. Quite a character to him. grooves the pants on the back side notice the path of the knife does not go at my thumb all right Alright, so uh, I'm going to start to work here on the uh, eyes. I'm going to go in with a blade, kind of circle the, uh, the, the shape of the, the eyes here. Just kind of go around them. So I'm turning the blade, and I'm also turning the wood to some extent, if I need to. To make my job a little easier. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And then I'm coming in. The inside of that hole. Carving it in ever so slightly. Like so. So, kind of getting the inside edges to kind of round that ball. This eye a little bit more because we got it looks like a little bit bigger of an eye on the other side. Just gonna take this little hump off of the forehead. We're a little too high here, in my opinion. Good. Just coming around that eye. And I can uh, just come in and take my time to clean this up and kind of round the ball. 
Looks like my knife needs to be polished a little, but you can see the idea. I'm going to separate the hands just a little bit. A little groove in the hands. V cut. I'm not going to worry about detailing these guys, really. I don't see a need to. But I can at least create a little separation between the two hands. Like so. Doing the same kind of little V cut under here. Sorry if that was blurry. Okay, what focus, there it is, you can see the separation there now. Just shrinking the wrist a little bit down. Yeah, that focus is giving me trouble. There we go. All right, there it is. And uh, about ready to take him to paint. A little paint on them. First, I want to create the uh, little indication of the dish in his ear. And I'm going to grab a gouge for that actually. I'll show you. All right, I've got a four millimeter, number 11. A nine would work. That just means it's got a curve in it, right? And uh, the higher the number, the more curve it has. So I'm going to take that little 11 that I've got and just start to kind of create a little bit of a dish for the ears, right? So it can hear. <laughs> like so. Don't want to remove a ton of material and make this too weak, but I do want to kind of hollow it out, that's all. Just like so. I'll finish this off camera, but you can see the idea. All right, so I got the dish shape in the ears. It's not perfectly beautifully clean but it's nice enough and I uh, got the uh, kind of eyes cleaned up just a little bit so a little chippy but uh, 
I'm just going to go around with the knife, find any little hairs like this, and just come through and clean them up. I'm not adjusting the shape all that much, but if my knife is, ni if my knife is nice and sharp, I can come in and just adapt, uh, or, or rather uh, refine any of these little messed up areas. i just clean them up a little, is all I'm doing. Like so. Okay. And uh, I'm also going to take the nose and define that just a little bit better. Kind of mouse nose. Go around the outside. Just using a little flip of the tool. Notice I'm really turning quickly as I'm moving through the wood. And the way the grain is going, it's uh, working out in my favor for that. On the tip. Okay. Coming in the corners of the mouth, like so. up. And again, turn the mouth up. Just cutting those cheeks down a little. The nose. Like so. Alright, it's pretty subtle, but uh, that's that. I'm going to come in a little bit lower, or take a little more out of the bottom of the chin as it meets the corner of the smile, like so. Like that. All right, <laughs> we've got a fun little character. And we'll scoop out from beneath the chin. So, just like that. All right, let's get to painting. How about it, huh? All right, just kind of quickly going through the uh, paint set and paint brush that we're using. Um, using three paints here, using titanium white. This is from Liquitex. Uh, I've linked all of this in the. Uh, description below. So if you're interested in picking this up, uh, I suggest it. I found the Amazon link and I put it in there. So I'm using Mars Black, Titanium White, and then just a bit of, uh, I don't know how to say this, Naphthol Crimson. And uh, yeah, so just going to use the uh, white and the red to make a tiny bit of pink. And I'm just applying the paint to uh, just some little plastic cups that I've cut with my knife. Like so. It's a little janky, but it works. 
That way if I dilute it, it's not a big deal. It's not going to get anywhere. Then I have a paintbrush uh, set here. These are a part of a, a set you can pick up uh, also in the description below, Amazon, called the Artist Loft. So yeah, that's that. So I've just got a little extra cup of water here as well, and uh, I'm going to start painting. And per usual, before I seal it, uh, before I paint it rather, I need to seal it. And so I'm going to use my uh, Minwax Polycrylic Clear Matte. This is also linked in the description below. I've done that for you, so you don't have to look for it. I like this product because it's pretty durable, and uh, it it's very easy to apply, and it doesn't look it doesn't darken the wood a whole ton. What you like, and it doesn't look fake or plastic. You know, I don't. I want a. I want a mat. I can use a mat. I want ideally to use a mat. So here we go. Make sure our nozzle's clean here. There we go. There it is. And if it pools up in any spot, I can uh, pretty easily just. Uh, Take a brush to it, get the excess out. Just trying to get all the angles. Very good. And it's a uh, it's a dry wood, so it should absorb most of the finish. And look at that. It darkens up a little bit, it'll uh, brighten up as it dries, just a touch. Let that dry, we'll come back to paint. All right, so now that the finish is dry, I've got my white paint, my wash, and I'm just going to start applying it to the uh, surface of the carving. And just kind of judge the uh, opacity or the amount of water that's necessary to add as I go. It looks like it's a little bit of a strong white, so I'm going to dilute it a little bit more based on my first swipe. And that's when I like it. I'm trying not to get it into the eye holes. And I'll leave the inside of the ears untouched. And if I get a little on the eyes, not the end of the world. As long as it dries. I just want to make sure that I'm getting all around the socket as well. So, yeah, maybe I will get it in the eyes. <laughs> That's okay. In fact, I'm going to work it in just so I can get in all those crooks and crannies. And you can use your hand or a, an extra towel laying around to clean up any uh, drips or any extra pigment on areas you don't want there to be pigment. Alright, so. Coming over the whole thing. Yeah, actually, let's make the sweater a different color. How about that? Well, and that's okay now, you know, once it dries. It's not the end of the world. I mean, I can wipe off any excess paint if I want, but uh, we'll stay away from the sweater for now. We'll let that be uh, a different color. So presenting issue is if I did just go ahead and uh, stop painting the, the sweater, I would have uh, one kind of distinguishing line where I stopped painting it white, and that would be an undertone. And that would end up being an issue, right? Because then you could see the white underneath the, the pink. So that translucency will work against us in that regard. So I'll just finish painting his shirt white. And uh, it doesn't mean we can't come in afterwards and paint it a different color. So now I'm going to go in with my pinks. So I'm going to take what's left of my white, the bottom of the barrel, I guess. Take a tiny bit of additional water and just a touch of red. We can always add more red as we go. And just create a little bit of a pink color. All right. Take a little bit of that pink in the inside of the ears, like so. And a 
uh, just a touch on the nose as well. On the feet. Just maybe a touch on the hands as well. May as well. I think that'll look good. And if you bump the sweater on accident, it's not the end of the world, because remember, we're still painting the sweater. So we'll have to be a little bit more particular when we go to paint the sweater. But that's good, just a little pink tone, maybe a little more on the feet. Just get the whole foot. Just a little tiny bit of pink on the cheeks here, and uh, you can always take take that off. You know, not off completely, but just to get the hint of it there. Just barely any touch of it. Nice. Okay, and we're in good shape there. If you want, you can dab off any excess to mute the color a little more. I don't know if that's a bad idea. Certainly don't think it is. Let that uh, dry. All right, I've got my red paint mixed up with uh, a little water, as you see here. It's a little, it's a little gory, but uh, I'm going to just kind of be a little bit more careful here and try to uh, work the paint around, work the paint around the sweater, and being careful not to paint anything that isn't supposed to be red because red's going to be a little harder to cover unlike the white. The white's easy to cover, the red not so much. Okay, so start with the back here. You just kind of judge the opacity. It looks pretty good. It looks like I can kind of see through it. That's good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kind of an interesting trick on uh, being stable stable-handed uh, is when you're painting you can actually let your foot uh, maybe a foot that's not <laughs> uh, disturbing your hand move a little bit it'll actually stabilize I can't remember the science behind this but it'll actually stabilize your body a little bit by letting yourself fidget which is probably why as a little kid I would fidget in school and get in trouble and uh, I remember in first and second grade, <clears throat> I got placed ne next to a girl, and uh, I tapped my eraser on my desk one too many times, and she had a meltdown. And they banished me from sitting next to Ashley ever again, which is sad because I had a crush on her. So, and Ashley, if you're listening to this, uh, sorry, sorry, I was so annoying to you in the second grade. I left schools after the second grade anyway, so we didn't have a chance, you know. <laughs> All right, just going around here. One thing you can do is if you do end up actually accidentally rather getting a little paint on the belly or whatever like I did here, I can come in and knife it out and do a little bit of a white touch up. Not the end of the world, it isn't going to be very noticeable and isn't going to take very much time to fix, so don't put too much pressure on yourself. If you're anything like me, you're kind of a sloppy painter. And it comes with experience. I really just, I don't paint a whole lot, to be honest. So maybe those of you who are doing more uh, little projects and painting them more often are uh, have an edge up on me, which is, that's ideal. That's good. All right, so I'm just going around the collar. Okay, pretty fun. <laughs> Come on, focus. 
Man, the focus doesn't like me today. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna get a little bit on the seams of this, uh, the hem of his sweater here. that dry. Real quick, uh, as this is starting to dry, I'm taking my damp cloth and taking a little bit of the high points off. And uh, I just like the way that looks personally, getting all those facets to show through. Let me do the eyes. paint on there Okay, beautiful. Got those black dots in. And if we uh, bleed over like we did a little bit on the uh, this eye here, we can just ever so gently carve it away. And you know our typical rules, if we get it on one side, we do the other as well. Get, keep things in proportion. <laughs> and uh, you could wait until this dries actually, that's smarter. white wash over the legs to hide the little overpaint that I did. And we're in business. You could do just a touch of a highlight as well on the eyes. That'll set them apart for sure. Very good. Okay. I get a little bit more of that white. Thin it down a little and get a nice little dot. And I'm just going to put a dot right there. And the same thing on the other side. Beautiful. And you got his eye in. It's looking cute. He's looking good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you watching this one. I know it's been a bit of a journey. And, uh, well, he needs to dry, but uh, I think it was worth it in the end. He's a cute little mouse man and, uh, hopefully he's got some good mouse plans and, uh, that's it guys. So I was sitting here taking a thumbnail picture of this thing when I realized I forgot the tail. So now we're going to carve a tail. Uh, this is a about two and a quarter inch, yeah, two and a quarter inch piece of, uh, basswood that I turned on the bandsaw or cut on the bandsaw, just have a little bit of an upward turn. 
has to connect to its butt. And I can always adjust the angle and just eyeball it. But I'm going to start by uh, kind of rounding it out. You can imagine how you, you go about carving a tail. <laughs> it's uh, not a challenging endeavor. Let me move this bench here. Yeah, it's a, a matter of uh, just kind of taking a square piece and rounding it off, which I guess is actually a little harder than it sounds in that, you know, to get it round, you have to make sure that you're uh, keeping the planes flat at first. Makes your job a lot easier. I start with a square. And uh, again, I'm just trying to make sure that it's got that curve so when it comes off of the body, it can land down on the ground. So I'm just narrowing this up a little bit, making the square a little smaller. And the reason that I do a square is because, uh, yeah, it's just easier to, to round a, a square thing than it is to uh, try and make something round that's an abstract shape. It's hard to get your bearings straight, so. Okay. And I'm going to narrow it this way again. So again, got this angle so that when it meets the bottom, it can kind of come and lay down flat. So now that it's pretty close to the desired size, going to uh, narrow the tip like so. And I start with one plane, I'm going to go to the other and the other. Narrowing as I move to the uh, to the tip here. And you can give it a little turn to one side if you want to emphasize one side over the other a little more. This side, rounding that up. Just giving this a little turn. So you can see that what I started to do was just take the square and cut the edges, angles off of it. And so uh, I'm just going to keep doing that and kind of rounding it out. And then I'll come back in just a bit. All right. Perfect. Well, not perfect, but good enough. All right, so I'm gonna stick it under this um, shirt here. So I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna come in like so, and I'm just gonna start a little circle, like so. And uh, this is a, a great time if you wanted to get a, a drill bit out, you could do that as well. If you wanna be nice to your knife, it's a good chance of chipping or breaking the knife if you don't know what you're doing here. I'm actually using the cutting edge to bore it out as I'm spinning through. And uh, yeah, you can really mess yourself up this way if you uh, don't know what you're doing. Uh, but that looks pretty good. Pretty good. Let's see how that looks. 
standing up. All right, well, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit stick straight, right? It looks like it could use to be a little bit lower. So what shall we do, huh? Let's just change the angle of it so that it goes, oh, sorry about the camera, downward, like so. It falls down. So I'm gonna carve that angle up into the shirt a little bit more. And in fact, I'm gonna get my drill bit just in case. I don't wanna ruin my tip. All right, so this is the direction I want my tail. So I'm gonna cut up and in that little uh, area there. So, like so. Just like that. And we'll try it once again. See how that fits. Better. Better, better, better. Oh, well, I guess we don't expect it to stay without glue, which brings me to my next point. Glue, you wanna get your glue. All right. So we've got the uh, tail set now. And I don't want it to be too, there we go. Something like that. I'm gonna pull it out, get some glue. Just using a little touch of super glue, a drip into that. Okay. And uh, here's the deal. I'm gonna find the position that best suits it, where the legs are flat and the tail touches the ground. That's my goal here, before it hardens. All right, and as it uh, finds its spot, you can set it in place. And then uh, get your accelerator. This is Mitropel. Um, that's also something I have in the link. And I uh, just spray it. And it'll accelerate the drawing process of that tail. And uh, we can go back and <laughs> grab our pink. The pink color that we were uh, creating before is, uh, is gonna be good for that tail. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that red, a little bit of the water, and paint this guy. All right, so I've got my pink mixed. I'm just gonna coat the tail. You could have sanded this tail if you really wanted it to be nice and round. I like to leave the facets in it. Uh, I guess the re main reason I do that is just to, you know, be lazy, but. It works, right? All right, we got his little tail. And that's the real ending of this. <laughs> Thank you again for watching. Once again, check out uh, the online school for more uh, kind of projects in the realm of realistic faces. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. If you want to learn to carve uh, realistic faces, like portraiture, something like that, um, a lot different than this, but still something like that. Uh, check it out. Uh, the link below. <laughs> I didn't say what it is. It is the, the school, the online school I started. So uh, basically 55 plus videos. You can see I'm scrolling here uh, that, you know, anything from realistic faces to wildlife relief scenes, stuff like that. So um, mostly focusing on the realistic face, though. So you can check that out in the link below. And other than that, I appreciate your support. Thanks for watching this. Please, if you haven't already, like uh, the video, subscribe to the, my channel, and uh, hit that little bell down below. It's going to uh, alert you to when a new video comes out. So anyway, that's it. Thanks.